Hi everyone, the Lord Wolf here and welcome to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And well, it's been quite an interesting week. If you look below on the screen, you can see that the movements have been absolutely huge uh, because of the announcement of the banning of uh, Ice Boxer. Um, someone also mentioned that part of it could be an intervention by the EVE Central Bank, which is a possibility. Um, I must admit, let me sit down here, that uh, plexus were going up quite steeply. Uh, but we have no confirmation on this and obviously I don't expect to see that uh, perhaps uh, at FanFest if it did happen. Uh, there is also a plex sale. All of this has pretty much formed the perfect storm. And so yeah, let's uh, get uh, in, it, in, in on the market here. And uh, let's start right away with plexus. And that is at about 55 seconds. And well, 8.28 for a Plex, 8.29, uh, something like that. 8.16 for the buyers, that is a significant decrease in price. Um, so it it finally happened. Look at this, uh, at this one month graph. Obviously, 9.60 was the five day average top. Uh, it reached a billion momentarily, which again could have been a trigger for the EVE Central Bank. It's, it's not something I can rule out, honestly, um, but uh, the fact that it's been able to maintain this downward momentum um, throughout the week is an indication that maybe uh, the ice boxer banning will have uh, had a pretty big effect on this as well which may become even bigger uh, january 1st when um, the first bans will be uh, going out to uh, to people that um, well that are not aware of these changes yet so they still have a month where they can actually use uh, ice boxer where they can use 20 30 mining ships uh, incursion ships or whatever to really inflate the economy uh, but after that i do think we could see like a double dip from this uh, let's maybe go on the six month chart to show you guys <laughs> oh my god here it's actually pretty damn extreme you can see the extreme rising plex prices at the final leg there but now the correction back um, to i would say a, a much more reasonable level um, 800 million is something that's at least somewhat doable for someone in a month if you know a little bit of um, about EVE Online and you have some experience in making some money 1 billion was really starting to push it so uh, I, I do think that the banning of Ice Boxer actually has a major impact on what's happened here the reason for that is uh, as I've said in the EVE uh, talk special uh, Ice Boxers allowed single players to inflate the entire economy by scaling um, the the activity that they did to an unreasonable level to a point where no one else could compete with them so if let's say you did incursions and you made uh, amongst the best ice caper hour you would do that ice boxing it well you would inflate the economy uh, hugely because of that and of course the number one product to suffer from this would be the plexus um, because that would be the first thing I think anyone that used 2030 accounts that is the first thing you want to invest that that income in that is those plexes to keep those accounts afloat so I think yeah that while a plex sale and an intervention is possible the banning of ice boxer I think will be uh, a major if not the major uh, reason for this uh, this pullback from plexes uh, now, the, the fact is that this will also have had a serious effect on the rest of the economy. Uh, and this is a part of the reason why I actually think that it's not just a plex sale or just an intervention. Because if you look at some of the other products, uh, you can clearly see that they have made a huge move as well. So let's move on to the minerals. And I'll write down four minutes for that. And let's start with Tritanium here. Maybe go for the one month chart, although you can see it here as well. Uh, a serious breakout uh, up to 6.4 ISK for Tritanium, so good times for Isaac Miners. Let's see if uh, Pyrite has followed suit. Yep, there you go. You can see a similar breakout here. And while I could look at supply demand, um, there is huge supply coming in because of this very high price. But there is big demand here as well, 2 billion units. Um, of, uh, of Tritanium, the most recent order at 628, so competing quite heavily with the rest of them. Not seeing it that much, but look at that 300 million here, 400 million here. People uh, were expecting that the banning of Iceboxer will meant a, a serious decrease in supply from uh, miners, uh, 
um, and thus, yeah, this, this reaction here. Let's have a look at Mixalon. Um, ooh, Mixalon, unexpectedly less so. Although I must say Mixalon was of course at a very high point at 70 ISK already at the beginning of the month. So the correction that it had was pretty much normal I think and now it's back up from 59 to 61. So the movement is much less pronounced here. There is big supply 26 million, 27 million but big demand as well 44 million and 56 million. Um, but I do think that these breakouts in most of them are due to the announcement that Icebox are uh, is going to get uh, banned starting in January 1st. So uh, yeah, again here Isogen, look at that, it was a little bit on a correction from 121 to 116, but breaking out up to 124, 125 for Isogen at the moment. So for Isaac miners, if you no longer have to compete with people running uh, 20 mining ships optimally, and by optimally I mean without any real added effort, they, they just press one click and 20 miners start mining their respective asteroids. Uh, that's not something you can compete with, of course, uh, they can drop the margins uh, very very low. Um, the amount they bring in compared to the entire market is pretty big and thus uh, if, if that's no longer the case, yeah, um, it will be more profitable uh, I think to uh, mine a little bit in high sec, which I think is a good thing uh, because mining is something that a lot of new players actually do like to do in the game at first. Uh, I think what they like about it is the steady stream of income. Uh, every time you finish a cycle and you bring your ore back, you know you've made some ISK. So I think that that is why uh, for, for new players to get their feet wet and to establish their bases, uh, something like mining is actually important. And so if that becomes more profitable, I actually don't think this is a bad thing for the game. Uh, let's have a look then at um, Noxium. This is an in-between one. Well, also... Uh, finally going back up, uh, we should say. Uh, Noxium, Zydrine and Megasite have really been going down for quite a while. Um, and so this could be the turning point for these as well. Uh, let's maybe have a quick look at supply demand. That's not that easily visible. Couple of buyers for, for a million. Couple of uh, sell orders. Well, this is actually still pretty recent here. Of 1.1 million, 2.8 million. So it actually feels decently balanced supply demand wise but this is just a general market thing here people are expecting um, tech one stuff to become more expensive because of the changes uh, that uh, well to is boxer obviously uh, because well people won't be able to mine as effectively anymore which i think is a correct analysis let's have a look here at zydrine also uh, after slugging along around the 440 uh, to 430 price band for an entire month. Finally, uh, Zydrine back up to 520, so not an insignificant increase in price. And we're probably seeing the same here for Megasite. Yep, exactly. Uh, after finally reaching a bottom, this announcement has really helped them to recover quite a little bit of lost ground all of a sudden. If I go for a six month chart, you can see right here at the tail end, although it still has a long way to go for Megasite. Um, that uh, that yeah it, it did break out of that rut that it's been in because of this announcement so pretty cool uh, let's have a quick touch at more fights also going up um, not not that bad either starting 4600 at the bottom even as close as uh, close to 4000 at the bottom and already back up to 5800 so yeah a lot of people have become quite a bit richer uh, because of uh, this change uh, I think people holding minerals uh, will be very happy with this and uh, a lot of people have been dumping plex obviously but it's not only uh, minerals that have gone up uh, I'm not sure but let's check the take one chips uh, so nine minutes for that I would expect him to go up but I'm not entirely sure so let's have a quick look here at the caracal actually no that's interesting uh, the caracal one month chart still holding at its 10.5 uh, price mark pretty good here is the Dominics the Dominics is breaking out a little bit that is to be expected uh, battleships are pretty big when it comes to minerals so uh, the mineral price is is going to have an effect on this the question is can oh look at that yeah actually it's it's a serious breakout on the three month chart the question is can the manufacturers um, um, keep a high supply and thus limit the increase in price compared to what it's going to be for the minerals that that is of course what the next few weeks is going to have to determine uh, i do feel that there is already a very strong industry base 
because uh, despite all the changes to industry last summer uh, basically people have been able to maintain supply pretty constant there has been demand as well they've reacted uh, in, a, in a normal uh, manner to all of the uh, increases or decreases in demand by increasing supply a little bit so I do think that there is actually margin in industry uh, the increased price of minerals of course people are going to ask uh, higher prices but what I'm hoping is that it's not going to be super drastic by the fact that there is actually plenty of supply um, to go around I think I think there's definitely plenty of production and people have been very careful this is the Drake chart by the way again looking pretty normal uh, pretty pretty much a, a, a flat uh, Drake at 46 million uh, but I, I do think that uh, people that uh, produce take one chips they know when to bring them to the market they know when to stock them uh, they know not to tank their own market with huge oversupply and so i actually think that the take one market could end up being okay uh, the biggest e uh, impact of these increased mineral prices is uh, expected i think on the big biggest chips as well obviously their production costs are going to go up uh, but here the myrmidon again holding at the 48 million no breakout on this here is the rupture looking pretty flat and here is the Talos again uh, up maybe a little bit but nothing completely out of the ordinary um, so yeah it's it's looking like this it might actually happen that take one chips will go up a little bit obviously uh, the increased uh, price of minerals is going to have an impact on the production but I do think that with stocks of both ships of minerals um, and with plenty of people able to manufacture them with with the best possible blueprints I do think that the take one market could actually be okay uh, and again the biggest impact expect that one obviously in the battleships because they need most minerals uh, let's move on to the take two market that could be interesting in these times I'll write down 12 minutes for that um, quick look at the basilisk here Ooh, breaking out here very nice um, maybe a six month chart is a little bit better yeah finally another spike for the basilisk I would not have thought it uh, at 165 being the low point here I, I would have liked to see it like closer to 160 uh, or in between 155 and 160 but here again showing the potential of the tech 2 market for uh, some trade activity if you had bought in at 165 you would have made a pretty good deal current basilisk there are none on the market and they're going for like 195 so uh, yeah that would have been a pretty good move let's have a look here at the guardian um, yeah look look at that nice little double dip here so at 135 then back up to 155 or above that almost 160 back down to 135 and here again taking off albeit quite a little bit slower than previously uh, but uh, four nice spikes here on the guardian chart showing again the potential for traders here this is the hound then um, holding at 19 i still think it's pretty low uh, 19 million for a stealth bomber so uh, it is possible that this is actually a good moment to step in you've seen hounds here at 25 and 23 million so i'd say above 21 million is not uh, impossible which is more than 10% markup from the current price so I actually think it's okay one thing to keep in mind is that the ice boxer has also been used for stealth bomber fleets and so this could decrease the amount a little bit it's just maybe a bit of information um, but I do think that uh, the, the stealth bomber market is big enough to actually uh, absorb that and that we could uh, still maintain this possibility of having some good trades here. Here is the Manticore after an opportunity at 19 million taking off uh, past 22 million. So obviously you're in sell order territory now for the Manticore. This is the Nemesis chart again uh, touching 19 million, hesitating a little bit but here finally taking off and it's now at 23 million. So if you'd been able to buy below 20 million you probably did a good job and uh, you can work on trying to sell them uh, above 22 million I think is, is something that's very doable. Uh, here is the Nighthawk chart, uh, the only command ship I'm still keeping in here I think. Um, it is starting to correct uh, but I would still like to see it way lower than it is here so uh, I would not invest in that just yet. If we see the Nighthawks like more at 240, 250 in that range maybe finally I, I can expect some of that spiky behavior which you still see in the first uh, part of the chart here look at that 240 up to 285 back down to 240 back up to 270 oh it's 265 I'm sorry uh, back up above 260 and then here again another nice spike up to 280 uh, but I think this run up 
this high plateau here was uh, due I think to the uh, Alliance tournament um, and maybe because uh, yeah, command chips have been in the mod a little bit more but uh, you're not seeing these, these trade movements in, in the last part of the chart and so I would be very careful with investing in command chips at the moment. This is the Oniros chart also trying to break out. Uh, let's uh, have a look at current prices. 168 for Oniros at the moment. That's actually pretty much where the data points are. So not bad. You had an opportunity below 150. You're almost at 170 now. Not bad. Here is the purifier then. Um, it's a little bit weird, uh, but you're still in seller ter territory, I think, after almost hitting 17 million. Um, but uh, it is going to start to go down. So I do think that the sell opportunity is uh, over, unfortunately. Uh, and then here is the scimitar chart, which, as you can see, uh, is looking pretty good as well in general over the last six months when it's come to trading. I mean, you have buying opportunities at 145, 140, another two here at 140. And we get sell opportunities as high as 165, 170, and even 175 here with a little double spike. That was very nice. And here an, another small spike here. So um, maybe you can still sell them. You're a little late here again, but uh, I do think that these charts show the trade potential of the stake two. Uh, take two ships and I do think we don't see a real impact from the ice boxer uh, ban on this market here so I just keep an eye on buy and sell opportunities when it comes to these ships now the tech tree market that should be something different 1635 something like that uh, you, you've probably already seen the Tengu breakouts to like 242 million uh, which I think is the biggest movement 28% increase in price so yeah, something is definitely happening here and let's immediately start with that Tengu. I'll keep the six month chart. It could be interesting to see how the Tengu has actually been slugging along the 130, 140 price band for most of the six months. And now it's finally breaking out here, 240 million on the chart. Let's have a look here at the Tengus. I'm not seeing, I'm seeing some oversupply. I'm not seeing the huge numbers of more than 100 Tengus coming in all of a sudden. So. Does this have to do with Ice Boxer? I don't know. I think if you have any experience with this, maybe you can help me out. Um, will the banning of Ice Boxer have an impact on the farming of high end uh, wormholes like C5, C6, maybe C4, stuff like that? Is, is it being used there? I don't know. I, I'd say it's pretty risky and quite expensive to set something like that up, but it is possible. Uh, so if you have any knowledge on that, let me know if it's actually also the banning of Ice Boxer that is doing this to the Tengu. Um, maybe if it's also here for the other ones, that could be an indication. And yeah, look at Proteus really taking off as well, heading towards 200 million, 195 for the sellers, uh, where you could see it, it went below 130. Um, and again, so this is pretty similar. Here is the Loki chart also breaking out, uh, reaching 200 million. And here is the Legion chart reaching 190 million um, after a low point of 120 uh, during the last summer. So this is pretty, pretty uh, big actually. Uh, the Tengu with a low point of 130 and currently 240. That's almost a doubling in price in a matter of one month. That's not insignificant. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd like uh, to know from you guys, do you think that actually the Ice Boxer is now playing a part in the in the upward swing of all of the Tech 3 ships? Because it was usually the Tengu that made a movement a week later, the other ones tried to mirror it, but it was not so successful. Uh, then um, supply started to come in with really big numbers, 50, 60 Tengus all of a sudden in single sell orders, and so the price would correct back. But here now we have a clear breakout. Um, there is some supply you look at that 15 19 for the Proteus Loki a little bit less and then the Legion also not that much So yeah, if you have an analysis of the tech tree market and if you know that it is the ice boxer, please let me know in the comments um, It's looking like that to me, but I'm not 100% sure because it feels like a pretty expensive and dangerous setup to do in remote space But it is entirely possible um, and then finally, I'm going to touch on the fuels. It's just a personal interest of mine, so 1925 for that. Um, but I, I would like to see maybe like long term trends in the fuel. So let's quickly grab here this six month chart, maybe go for a one year chart. Okay, one year it's uh, heading back where we were a year ago, but that doesn't say much. Um, but it's something I noticed uh, a slight downward trend in all the fuels. Um, 
and I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing a big shock uh, because of the ice boxer ban because this could have an impact on the ice mining although keep in mind, mind ice mining is actually limited in supply not by the players so much but also by the respawn rates of the ice bells and so I, one possible explanation could be this is the Galente chart also well holding on but very very slowly coming below 15.5k so yeah slight slight downtrend here as well over the, the last like three four months um, so yeah the impact to ice mining could be uh, uh, smaller because there is just a limited amount of ice out there and so the fact that uh, one, one or two ice boxers in an ice belt is not there does not mean that it won't be mined out by the end of the day because there are uh, alliances that, that do like to do mining and stuff like that and they'll probably be based out of those systems already and they'll still be able to manage to get the entire ice belts it's it's a possibility but it's very interesting to see Kaldari fuel blocks they're up a little bit so there is a little bit of a response here um, but the trend over the last four months I think you can see that as well a downward trend in Kaldari much more pronounced than the Galente fuel blocks Kaldari is the most popular race they probably have the most bosses uh, this could be a reason of course and then here are the Amar fuel blocks yeah after a serious dip here trying to correct back but again you can see a slight downward trend over the last four months um, so very very interesting uh, it does make uh, for a bit, this is where my personal interest come in for a very good choice of going into the C1 wormhole when we did where we were on lower and lower uh, fuel block prices so it became a little bit cheaper every week to actually fuel our POS uh, and in the meantime the changes during Phoebe to the C1 Wormo made that one much more profitable and so now it is uh, very very easy to actually fuel a small POS from your wormhole income uh, in fact I would go as far as to say that that maybe a large POS uh, is actually very doable if you can play every day just solo I think it's actually uh, possible to fuel that just from the income uh, of a C1 worm all these days so yeah that was uh, pretty pretty nice I will have to keep a, an eye on it um, in the next few weeks though if the impact of the ice boxer uh, does indeed stay that limited another possibility uh, is that there are actually stocks of uh, fuel blocks available that are currently keeping the price down but once uh, the market chews through those stocks uh, the impact could be there it's a possibility uh, we'll have to wait and see anyways that's going to be it for this eve talk then guys uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, i'll see you all next time